Okay, good day. So today, tingin tayo ng examples no, ng problems na kung saan natin pwedeng gamitin yung natutunan natin about the first part of the fundamental theorem of the calculus. Well, let's start. So, examples on FTC part 1. Okay, first let's recall no, kung ano ba yung sinasabi ni FTC part 1. Ang sabi niya, if you take the derivative of the definite integral from a to x ni f of t dt, mababalik tayo sa lowercase f of x. This is the same no, as saying that if you construct a function from the definite integral from a to x, gumagalaw yung x, so function siya, of f of t dt, ang makukuha nating function ay anti-derivative ni, nung nasa loob ni lowercase f of x or f of t in this case. Kaya pag kinuha natin derivative niya, babalik tayo dun sa f of x. Okay, so let's start with something relatively simple. We want to evaluate the derivative of the definite integral from x to 4 of the square root of 1 plus t squared dt. Hindi siya diretso, no? Pareho nung nasa theorem na from constant to x. Binaliktad natin yung limits of integration. Yung x nasa baba, it's the lower limit. Tapos yung constant yung nasa upper limit, yung 4. So how do we approach this? So we'll have to use the property, no? That the definite integral from a to b of a function is equal to the negative of the definite integral from b to a. Na pag switch natin yung limits of integration, nagiging negative yung value nung integral, nung definite integral. So we switch the limits of integration. So now it's the derivative of the negative of the integral from 4 to x of the function. Now of course, yung negative, no, pwede natin siyang, yung, yung derivative ng isang negative na value, pwede nating ilabas yung negative at evaluate muna yung derivative before we apply the negation. So we could write this as the negative of d over dx or the derivative of the definite integral from 4 to x of the square root of 1 plus t raised to the 4 dt. So I think from here, medyo madali na nating ma-apply yung first fundamental theorem of the calculus. This will just give us negative of the square root of 1 plus x to the 4th. Ipapasok na natin yung x dun sa, sa t. And that's it. We're done. Let's highlight this because this is our final answer. And let's move on to the next problem. For our next problem, we want to find the derivative from negative x to x. Okay? Negative x to x. Walang constants of cosine of the quantity t squared plus 1. So, ang isipin natin dito, paano, paano natin i rewrite yung definite integral expression natin in such a way that we could just, you know, apply yung first fundamental theorem of the calculus. So we'll take advantage of a property ng definite integral na if there is a third a third value, let's say c, so diba the definite integral from a to b, this is equal to the definite integral from a to c plus the definite integral from c to b. So pwede tayong mag-designate ng kahit anong value talaga, no? Pero ang consideration lang natin is that defined ba yung function at yung definite integral dun sa value na gagamitin natin. Pero since we know, no, dapat na dapat continuous yung function natin from from a to b and then we could just choose a value between negative x and x although pwede naman na hindi nasa gitna ni negative x and x although to be fair this is a cosine function so yeah it should be continuous everywhere naman ba but siguro let's just choose a value between negative x and x and yung pinaka obvious na value between negative x and x should be zero so I'll just rewrite yung definite integral ko as the sum from, oops, sorry, dapat dt. Okay, dapat dt yung ginamit ko, hindi dx. Kasi t yung variable eh. So let's just rewrite this again. Okay, so we are rewriting yung definite integral from negative x to x as the negative integral from negative x to 0 plus the definite integral from 0 to x of the same function, dt, hindi dx, of the same function, yung cosine quantity t squared plus 1. Okay, so le after we distribute the differentiation operation, let's rewrite this as the derivative of the definite integral from negative x to 0 of our function plus the derivative of the definite integral from 0 to x naman of the same function, cosine of the quantity t squared plus 1. Now, if you take a look dun sa rightmost term, no, we could already simplify this by using the first part of the FTC as cosine x squared plus 1. Papalitan na lang natin yung t ng x. 
So let's apply the technique that we used in the first problem no na yung definite integral from variable to a constant pag sinwitch natin yung limits of differentiation magiging negative yung definite integral. So nilabas ko na yung negative before pa nung, deri- nung derivative nung differentiation operation. So we could write this as a negative of the derivative of the definite integral from 0 to negative x of our function cosine t squared plus 1. Plus Diretso na tayo, cosine of the quantity x squared plus 1 sa right side. Now, we have to use here the chain rule. Kasi hindi x yung variable, eh. it's negative x. So, let's just recall the chain rule quickly. If you want to take the derivative of f of g of x, or here I'm using f of u of x, this is equal to the derivative of f evaluated at u times the derivative of u. So, in our case, yung variable u natin is negative x. So, ano yung derivative ng negative x? It's negative 1. So, u prime is equal to negative 1. So, let's evaluate that derivative. This is now equal to, is equal to negative of f of u. So, cosine of negative x quantity squared plus 1 times the derivative of u, which is negative 1. So, this is our first term plus yung nasagot na natin kanina na cosine of the quantity x squared plus 1. So, negative x, quantity squared is x squared. Tapos, uh, may negative sa labas, plus may negative sa loob. So, they will cancel each other out. So, this is just cosine of the quantity x squared plus 1 plus cosine of the quantity x squared plus 1 or 2 times the cosine of the quantity x squared plus 1. This is our final answer and let's highlight it with a red box. Uh, I, I guess I forgot to give you instructions no start no. Nasana, as I give the problem, like here, I-pause nyo muna at try nyo munang sagutan before tayo mag-proceed sa solution. So maybe here at this point, you can pause it and try to evaluate this definite integral. Total, may natutunan naman tayong techniques no? dun sa first two problems. So pause it now. Let's wait. Okay, welcome back. So, this time, makita natin na we are taking the definite integral from 0 to sin x. So that, sh- that should tell you that we'll invoke the chain rule once again. So let's uh, rewrite this. Na ang u natin ay sin x at ang u prime or the derivative of u is cosine x. So this is equal to the derivative from our constant 3 to sin x but sin x is u. So let's just u there of 1 over 1 minus t squared dt. Yung parang yung function natin. And in this case, yung definite integral from t from 3 to u, this is like a composite function. Instead of x, we have u of x dun sa loob nung function. So when we apply the derivative, we'll apply the chain rule. This is equal to 1 over 1 minus u squared times the derivative of u, which is cosine x. Performing these substitutions, we'll get that this is equal to 1 over 1 minus sine squared x times cosine x. But we know from trigonometry that we could apply the Pythagorean identity sa 1 minus sine squared x, that that is equal to cosine squared x. So we could rewrite our expression as cosine over cosine squared. And this will give us secant x. So we'll just highlight our final answer na secant x. So the next problem is a bit more involved. Hindi siya straightforward na solving. So again, I want you to pause the video after the problem has been written out and try to understand kung ano yung hinahanap, ano yung hinihingi, and try to get to that solution. So, we're given that capital F of X, no, is equal to the definite integral from 0 to X ng 1 over 1 plus T squared plus the definite integral from 0 to 1 over X of 1 over 1 plus T squared. Of course, dahil meron tayong 1 over X dun sa definite integral, hindi pwedeng maging 0 si X. So, restricted tayo sa values ng X natin. What we need to do is we want to show no, that si capital F of X, this is really just a constant for all values ng X except 0. So for X is an element of yung all real numbers except 0. So pause it now and try to figure this out. So I hope we give it an honest try. So let's proceed with the problem. So let's ask ourselves the question, what does it mean? To show that capital F is a constant, that would mean no, that ang derivative niya will be equal to zero. Ang gagawin natin is evaluate natin yung derivative ni capital F of x as it is given. 
So let's write that down, yung gusto natin gawin. Na if f is a constant, then f prime of x for all valid values of x should be equal to 0. So I think I missed an expression here. Dapat f prime of x equals 0 for all these values of x. So I missed that here. I think I'll just add it sa post. Let's proceed. So the derivative of capital F of x, this is equal to derivative of the individual terms nung function as it was uh, defined. So it's equal to the derivative of the definite integral from 0 to x of 1 over 1 plus t squared plus the derivative of the definite integral from 0 to 1 over x of 1 over 1 plus t squared. Yung first term natin, medyo madaling ma-evaluate. So we'll leave that for later. Let's take a look at the second term first. Gagamitan natin siya ng chain rule. Kasi yung variable x natin, it's not really x. It's a function of x, 1 over x. So we let u be equal to 1 over x. And u prime, the derivative of u, is equal to negative 1 over x squared. So the first term, madali, direct application FTC1. That's just equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. And for the second term, this will give us 1 over 1 plus 1 over x quantity squared. Kaya 1 over x squared na siya. Times the derivative of 1 over x. So times negative 1 over x squared. Rewriting yung second term as a fraction na binomial yung denominator. So what did we do? We multiplied x squared over x squared. This will give us the whole thing 1 over 1 plus x squared plus x squared over x squared plus 1 times yung negative 1 over x squared. So magka-cancel out yung dalawang x squared sa numerator and denominator. So anong natira sa atin? We'll have 1 over 1 plus x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 1, which, are, which is, you know, the same as 1 plus x squared. So, the whole thing is equal to 0. So, na-demonstrate na natin that capital F of x must be a constant kasi ang derivative niya ay 0 for all valid values of x. So, kailangan pa rin nating sabihin na hindi pwedeng 0 yung x natin. So, ano, ano itsura ng graph nun? It's a horizontal line na may hole at x equals 0. So yun lang muna for examples using the first part of the fundamental theorem of the calculus. Yung mas importanting, ano niya, yung mas importanting impact niya is kung paano binibuild no FTC1, yung FTC2. And actually, yung FTC2, the second part, is the one that we'll be using a lot more over the school year. So I'll see you sa next lesson video natin at salamat sa pakinig.